we rejoin you with former White House Press Secretary Scott McClellan's first primetime interview after the publication of his singular book, What Happened. All right, a propaganda. You write of its use in the book, and you write of the supposed liberal media not really doing its job um, for not being dubious enough, particularly about Iraq. But let me read this. Trying to make the WMD, while the, the administration was trying to make the WMD threat, and the Iraqi connection to terrorism appear just a little more certain, a little less questionable than they were, quietly ignoring or disregarding some of the crucial caveats in the intelligence and minimizing evidence that pointed in the opposite direction, using innuendo and implication to encourage Americans to believe as fact some things that were unclear and possibly false, such as the idea that Saddam had an active nuclear weapons program and other things that were overplayed or completely wrong, such as implying Saddam might have had an operational relationship with al-Qaeda. Uh, I think many in the, in the media, liberal or otherwise, would, would rant and rave and say, no, this is not possibly true, and then tell you off the record. Yeah, we, we did lay back, possibly for patriotic reasons, possibly for fear. A lot of things were involved. But I'm interested because there's no real mention of this in the book. What about the supposed conservative media, and, and obviously the, the, the symbol of that is, is Fox News. What was Fox News to you and to the White House? Was it uh, a friendly cousin, a house organ? Was it the cho choice of, for funneling propaganda? What was well, it? Well, I mean, there, there's certainly allies there that work at Fox News, and I, I, there's one story uh, that I've told before. I didn't include it in the book, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, during the vice president's hunting accident, um, which was another disillusioning moment for me because I was out there advocating, get this news out and get it out now. And, uh, of course, the vice president said, no, 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 and he decided to send it to the website or the Corpus Christi Caller Times website as opposed to getting out widely to the national media. I remember. Um, and caused me a lot of uh, fun at the podium for about three days before the vice president decided that uh, he was going to go out and uh, talk uh, about this after a, a little nudging uh, from the president mm -hmm. and we were standing outside the oval getting ready to go in for a meeting and you know, he looked at me and he said you know, you know why I picked Fox News to do this because I want everybody else to have to cite Fox News when they do their reports it's just kind of the attitude of uh, uh, the vice president about things uh, you know we've, we've seen his attitude uh, that kind of attitude and other comments he's made uh, when doing interviews uh, as well uh, such as with Marta, Martha Raddus when she mm -hmm. uh, asked him and he responded with the, the so yeah. Uh, and we, yeah that the people don't agree with this policy, and it was right. so. And that was his answer. Yeah. Uh, what did you know, or did you know anything about this story that the New York Times reported last month, that the, the Pentagon had essentially these quid pro quo deals with retired generals who, um, while presenting themselves on many of the networks as disinterested observers, in fact, were still perhaps involved in companies that had still had dealings with the Pentagon. It was a very dicey situation journalistically. Did you know about it? Did you know you had a staff of generals working for you in some respect? Uh, that, that I didn't know. That was pretty much left for the Pentagon to run their way. The, um, the, this next question I know is going to come across, and I, I can't resist it, it's going to come across to some degree as self-aggrandizing. But relative to the media, and I'm asking this for every person who ever came up to me on the street and said, uh, I, I feel like I'm going out of my mind living through this. This cannot be the America that I grew up in. Were the critics in the media and outside the media of the president largely right? Uh, in terms of the Iraq war and the development of the, of the war? Uh, specifically yeah. that, and you can go out in any direction you want, well, but specifically I, in terms of Iraq. I, I, I think certainly in terms of Iraq, there, there was a lot that they were right about uh, as I went back and reflected on this. Um, it, it's not that I'm necessarily aligned with them on some other views and things, but uh, uh, certainly on the build-up to the Iraqi war, uh, we should have been listening some more to what they were saying. The American people should have been listening a little bit closer to some of what was being said. Uh, but I, like a lot of Americans, was caught up in the moment of post-9-11 and wanting to put my uh, faith and trust in, in the uh, White House and the president uh, that I was serving. Does it cost you, and I ask this question sympathetically, does it cost you sleep when you hear about another casualty in Iraq that you would have had that much to do with that, with that war? Well, I, I used to walk, uh, and I, I talk about this in the book, I used to walk alongside the president when he would visit uh, the fallen, and uh, uh, it, it has a very profound effect on you. Our, our troops uh, are doing an amazing job. They've succeeded. I mean, they've done their job, yes. and they've done more than they've uh, uh, should have been called on to do in the first place, and they continue uh, to do an amazing job. Uh, but I, I have been there in the room with the president when he's uh, walked in to comfort uh, families of the fallen or walked into, uh, I, I remember vividly, and I talk about this in the book as well, when the president walked into a room at Walter Reed and you had a, a young mother uh, with uh, the, the boy, I think, was in the seven-year-old range, mm. and his father is sitting there in a wheelchair. Uh, with bandages uh, wrapped all around his head, and I, none of us, you, know, you couldn't tell if he knew what was going on around him. 
uh, and it was just a, a powerful moment, a uh, very moving moment. The president was moved by it very much so. Uh, you know, I could see in his eyes uh, how moved he was by it, and I talk about that in the book. But uh, you don't forget those moments. But about Iraq, you had written in, in the book, in the permanent campaign era, it was all about manipulating sources of public opinion to the president's advantage. Was this true about Homeland Security, to your knowledge, to any degree? Because that's been a suspicion, obviously, of a lot of the president's critics. Did the White House manipulate at any point, to any degree, the, the threats of terror to, for the president's advantage? You know, I can't speak to that. Uh, that, that was more in some policymaker realm that, uh, again, in part of the compartmentalized White House. Uh, that's not something I ex explore in the book uh, because I don't have direct knowledge of some of that. So there's, uh, there's a press conference. Uh, it pertains to the White House and a threat to the nation, and they and they did not clue you in on it. Well, there there were certainly times when I when I was involved uh, in some of the threats. Uh, I remember it was uh, over the holiday period, uh, maybe 2004, uh, when there were threats. The, the and, Christmas time flights. Threats. Yeah, the Christmas time flights, and I did sit in on uh, some national security or or counterterrorism meetings then, um, and there was a real concern then. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I can't speak to some of the other meetings that might have occurred. One more break, then we look ahead with Scott McClellan. The 64,000 person question, the White House did all this for a war in Iraq. Are they now doing all this all over again for a war in Iran?